Hi, it's me Katie. Welcome back to Steal the Spotlight. Today I thought it'd be fun to have a look at the aesthetic known as Barbie core. I've seen it popping up more and more recently with the likes of Valentino practically force feeding us this bright, vibrant pink, as well as the hype surrounding the upcoming Barbie movie starring Margot Robbie. We've only had a couple of sneak peeks at the wardrobe design, but I'm definitely keen to see the full extent of it. Today, however, I wanted to do more of a throwback to the Barbie cinematic universe that so many of us grew up with. I think it's pretty safe to say that I have never grown out of my love for playing dress up, so I was more than happy to embrace the princess styling. If you're feeling a little nostalgic and wondering where you can go back and watch some of these Barbie movies, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, award-winning VPN Surfshark. So when it comes to streaming services like Netflix, the version you see can be completely different to people on the other side of the world, but with Surfshark, you're able to quickly and easily change those location settings and then instantly have access to a ton more content. I noticed a lot of the Barbie movies are scattered all around the world with some having very limited access compared to others. And of course the same concept applies no matter what you're in the mood to watch from anime to films to drag race, there'll be something to suit everyone's taste, which is perfect because Surfshark actually offer unlimited devices under just one account. Of course, there's a long list of other benefits, including ensuring your privacy and safety online by protecting all of your personal information. You can use my code spotlight for 83% off plus three extra months for free. And since Surfshark offer a 30 day money back guarantee, you can try it all risk free via the link on screen and down below in the description box. So Barbie's been serving looks since her first iteration was unveiled at the American Toy Fair back in 1959. Over the years, we've seen her dabble in a wide variety of styles from very casual to designer collaborations. Her dominance reigned supreme for decades without a doubt cementing her as a pop culture icon. For me personally, as a kid growing up in the early 2000s, I'm not gonna lie, my style preference did lean more towards brats. Just because the Barbies available to me in store at the time seemed to have strayed away from her fashion model roots and instead had more emphasis on Barbie trying various jobs in the workforce. That is Earth. <laughs> that is Earth. It's hot. A shout out to my singalies though, who certainly put up a good fight at the time and ended up dominating the online dress up game world. I don't know, I feel like there's a future video idea there. So despite the many phases Barbie has been through, she has undeniably always been associated with pink, which is very, very evident in the version of Barbie core we are currently experiencing. Really, it feels more like a subcategory of the Y2K trend that's been popular for the last couple of years. But if you include just the right amount of pink and maybe a touch of sparkle, it'll be deemed barbiecore instead. And don't get me wrong, as much as I am a fan of this overall aesthetic, I feel like I owe it to my inner child to challenge myself a little bit more because to little Katie, the legacy of Barbie was much more than just a doll, but rather a princess no different than the likes of Cinderella or Aurora, which of course was thanks to her endeavor into film starting with her debut in Barbie in the Nutcracker back in 2001. From then on, she continued to bring viewers into other fairy tales and fantasy lands to great success, despite what I would consider the somewhat disturbing animation at times. Congratulations, Barbie. So while some of the looks today might be slightly less wearable than usual, I hope you can still enjoy. And I guess just remember, Halloween is only just around the corner. I mean, come on now, we all know it would have been stupid of me not to include this dress and boots combo in a Barbie core video. But I know we can do even more. Just leaving it at that would have been somewhat lazy of me. So I decided to take inspo from Barbie's rainbow transformation and also kind of just give a little bit of Barbie at pride. At first, I really wanted one of those butterfly tops, but I ended up thrifting this very bold maxi dress and just cut it to the shape I wanted. I feel like it still gives a somewhat butterfly or petal type of illusion. Overall, I'm just obsessed with this look and I'm now convinced I'm missing my calling to be a fairy in a kid's television show. Like, tell me you wouldn't hire me. I'm sorry, but I'm just not ready to drop the fairy vibes yet. But this time around, I wanted to try a less literal approach and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. One of the easiest ways to make an outfit feel a little more unique is to mix two opposite aesthetics together. Here, we obviously have the color palette of Barbie core, but if you look at the actual outfit combo itself and picture it in say red and black, it instantly has a rockstar GF feel to it. Think the leather pants, the double belt detail. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it gives a cool and unexpected feel to the look, especially considering the original source material. 
Princess Charm School is easily the most wearable and within my own comfort zone with the plaid and preppy vibes. I am actually kind of surprised though that despite being a vest enthusiast for years, I don't have a blue or like a fitted denim one, but I think we made it work with this crop top instead, especially since the pink skirt is so spot on. I couldn't help myself and added my favorite bow accessories. Literally, I just throw these stockings on with everything at this point. I'm sorry, but I still love it. And like I mentioned, this is definitely most in line with my own personal style, which is probably why it also looks like it could be a K-pop stage outfit. Okay, I'm actually kind of scared for this one because I feel like it's one of the most beloved Barbie movies. We all know the music Slayed. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. You're just like me. You're just like me. So I just have a feeling that you might not like the fact that my outfit really doesn't stick very closely to the original at all. But hear me out. Let me explain my thought process a little bit. First and foremost, the dress is cute. And it's also just in a more wearable silhouette than the girls' more old-timey gowns. I like the fact that the pattern incorporated both the pink and blue all in one, and I added this underbust belt to mimic a similar vibe to their bodice detail. My favorite part though, hands down, is the cape. While it's not as dramatic as their hooded cloaks, trust me, as soon as you're twirling around, you instantly embody the character. This is one of the more recent Barbie films on my list coming out in 2016, but I was really drawn to the girls' spy costumes. I don't know, maybe I still had my last Totally Spies video on my mind, but I thought this would be a fun one to recreate. I kind of inverted the colors by having the statement coat be purple and then the underneath be a pop of pink. And I swear I didn't just use the dress over pants look to try and cover up the fact that these are indeed the Maddie pants from Euphoria. I just really like how the proportions work together and I think it adds to the mood of the outfit having almost a slight futuristic element. It would have been cool to add an interesting pair of glasses or goggles as well. Okay, so for Island Princess, we have another very loose interpretation. I didn't want to go for the big heavy ball gown, but instead take inspo from the beachy island sort of theme. So my brain instantly went to one of the biggest trends we've seen over the summer, crochet. The color and style of this top hit the brief perfectly. And because I loved the strappy back so much, I wanted to continue the theme in the front by using the waist ties from the skirt as a crisscross halter instead. Me, not so much a summery beach person, but I do think the look is pretty cute. That is, if you pretend I'm actually a Bratz doll and just snap my feet off because my lord, the shoes are not giving. They were old maiden type of shoes. Swan Lake has one of the most stunning dress transformations in my opinion. I love the pink and blue color combo. Barbie just looks so gorgeous. I feel like for my version, we started out really strong. I truly felt like a magical princess. I love it from the bottom of the skirt up. But when I look at the full length shot, I wish the skirt just had more volume to it just to balance out the straight up and down of the hips and legs. If it had more of that ballerina tutu shape like the original, I think the proportions would have worked better. I don't know, maybe this is just me nitpicking again. If it's one thing Barbie loves, it's breaking out those fairy wings, so I had to circle back to Fairytopia. I saw this beautiful dreamy top in my Depop suggestions when I was initially planning this video, and I just fell in love. It instantly evokes a magical feel. I could totally see this being dressed up for a festival or rave, but I tried to dress it down a little bit by just matching it with my favorite pair of pink jeans. I have been living in these ever since I dyed my hair. Strangely enough, this almost feels kind of bare to me. Like, it's just not the same level of layering that I'm used to, but I honestly just thought this top deserved to shine on its own. The Barbie Diaries actually deliver multiple cute and casual options, very on brand for its release in 2006. My look is most inspired by this pink and denim combo, although I did make the executive decision to switch out the capris to a midi length skirt just to modernize it a little. And because I'm a repeat offender when it comes to over accessorizing, it should be no surprise. I snuck in a few extras here too, just to bring a bit more dimension. I was having a hard time deciding between the shoe options though. The strappy sandal is more in line with the source material, but I love love the chunky platform and leg warmers, which almost gives this outfit a bit of a hearty vibe, which as you probably know, I tend to be a bit biased towards. One of my favorite things about Barbie as Rapunzel is the magical paintbrush, which she uses to pick her gown. She gives us a couple of options, but today I'm actually taking inspo from her first reject, which I thought was the prettiest anyway. Obviously this is the most costumey of the bunch because the base is a thrifted formal gown, but I mean, you had to let me live the princess fantasy to the full extent at some stage before the end of this video. The purple beading is actually a poncho, but I wore it around the waist just to break up this block color and then soften the look 
with this off the shoulder blouse worn underneath. I feel like it just adds that romantic feel. And then just to really ensure I was doing the most, I added some touches of pink as a nod to the final dress she chose in the film. If you think it's too much or too tacky, maybe you're right. You'll never be glam. That's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the outfits. Let me know who your favorite Barbie was or what pop culture icon you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.